Um, hello and welcome to Stronger by the Day. I think we're up to episode 17 now. Um, just out in St. Patterson's Land, out by Holyrood Road where we train Barbell Club. Um, a garden that I didn't even know existed in Edinburgh. That's kind of like Edinburgh's like this shit you never heard of before, shit you never seen before. I've lived here for 10 years, didn't even know what to see. Worked in the in St. Lawrence building for 5 years, didn't even know what to see. Probably more a lack of my attention than anything else. This guy drilling on the wall. So uh, good acoustics outside. Um, it's also going to be windy and sunny intermittently because it's Edinburgh. It's fucking mental. Um, today's topic, after 40 seconds of talking absolute shite, is just going to be quickly how to manage back pain. So back pain is something that I've lived with for the guts of like eight years. Um, when I started lifting, up until 2012, I didn't really know how to set my back in deadlift. So I just yolo it and just fucking rip it off the floor, as the vast majority of my do. Um, I've done videos on deadlift setups and how to get yourself in a good position. I did a tutorial like three weeks ago on one called Just the Tip. How to set your back in a deadlift, uh, which is really good. Um, or really useful, I think, video that you should go check out. But mainly, if you have snapped yourself, if you have snapped yourself too, which it does happen, it's how to manage it, how to, how to not make it any worse. Because um, it's just, it's common sense. You either get people who don't pay any attention to it, who try to just um, go on as normal and just make it worse for fucking ages. And you get people who are the opposite end of the spectrum, who have fucking voodoo rituals that they do to try and um, do movement assessments by themselves, or they try to do some fucking obtuse uh, warm-up routine or some fucking rehab that hasn't been directed by someone who knows what they're doing. For the, for the vast majority of it, it's just this common sense, what you do. So just to give you a bit of my background, um, like I said, I've been deadlifting with shit form for the best part of a decade, and I, I have, I don't know what exactly, my, I've never had a scan, but I'm pretty sure I've got slip discs in there. Must do. Um, when my back's overloaded and when it's painful, I, I can't walk properly. Um, I think spondylosis uh, is the is a degenerative back condition that I think I probably have. Basically, the within the the spine or within the um, discs themselves, you get bony spurs that develop from loading on the spine or inappropriate loading of the spine, and those bony spurs can impede root canals so or they can impede nerves or root canals and basically what you end up with you end up with um, some uh, side effects that I get or some side effects some uh, some of the symptoms that I have when my back's overloaded or it's painful I can't walk for more than about 300 yards without my back going numb so I have to sit down decompress the spine before I can continue on walking um, sometimes it can be so painful that walking more than 100 yards is, is a task, it's hard. Um, and that's 100% down to my own training, my own stupidity. Um, not paying attention to my technique, not programming properly, trying to go heavier every week, trying to get more reps every week, trying to get more weight every week. Not paying attention to my form, ripping it off the floor, trying to get fast from the floor with no technique, and I completely and utterly fucked my back. So how do I, ma how do I manage this? Cause I, I, do, I do lift heavy, four days a week. Um, and I managed to do so for the vast majority of the year, probably about 48 out of 52, at least. So the first thing um, is, to, is to address the root cause of the problem. The root cause of the problem, for the vast majority of people, is number one, your technique shit. You don't maintain a neutral spine or you don't um, have a natural lower abdominal curve in your movement. So in the squat that means you crumple down like a sack of shite. Um, your lower back rounds under... You don't know how to create tension in your back. You don't know how to sit into the hole and create a tension at the bottom. So there's actually like a fake bottom, like we've talked about in some of the squat videos. Um, you don't know how to load properly. You maybe don't have the mobility or you don't have the, the correct equipment, correct squat shoes to sit down into a good squat. The full depth with good technique, keep your back in a neutral position. In deadlifts, you don't appreciate how to set your upper back. You don't know how to appreciate how to set your back. You just bend down and pick it up. And you don't really invest in getting a coach or invest in getting a personal trainer or, or video yourself enough or, or self-critical enough. No one's self-critical enough. Everyone thinks they're fine. 
Oh, uh, let's see, he's saying that my shift form shite. That doesn't apply to me. It probably applies to you. The vast majority of people I see lift have shift form. It's even people that are fucking strong. Strong as fuck. Guys deadlifting 360 kilos with gear that they're nuts with shite form. And they're going to end up hurting themselves. Um, just like I've hurt myself, like a lot of people hurt themselves because they don't pay attention to the technique. They just, oh, I'm doing speed pulls today, so I'm going to fucking rip it off the floor like a Mongo um, without setting my back, without doing it correctly. So. You know, I mean, you can you can have a world record and still lift like a fucking retard. It's not, does it? It's not it's not determinant on how strong you are. You can have great genetics, be 140 kilos, be trend out your fucking nut, and still pull world record weights, squat world record weights. It's you know, it's not it's not down to technical mastery. It's down to you being big and juicy as fuck, and strong. So, just because someone's strong doesn't mean they have good technique. Good technique is a thing. It exists. Uh, and in the terms of keeping your back safe or having having less back pain, reducing back pain and eliminating back pain from your training, the first thing is your technique. And it's just all, it's down to creating tension in the core, in the lower back, the fucking corset, the muscular corset of the abdomen, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's about being able to hold that stable, um, holding it in a neutral position, holding the lower body arch through the entire movement. And this wind's starting to fuck me off, but it doesn't ruin the sound. So the first one's technique. You, you gotta address that. You, you can't let yourself pull with a rounded back. You can't let yourself squat with a rounded back. You just can't. Unless you're willing to suffer the consequences. Which is back pain. And bad back pain. Flip discs the whole night. Like it's gonna happen if you don't sort of technique. Might, but it's probably gonna happen if you have good technique. It's just gonna take longer for it to happen. Um, so number one. Number two is your programming. If you're at limit weights all the time, you're trying to add reps all the time, you're overreaching all the time, your tissue is constantly under load. So when your tissue is under, when we do, when we perform exercise, when we provide a stress on a muscle, a bone, a tendon, whatever it is, we are damaging that tissue. On a muscle, we're causing micro tears. On a on a bone, we're loading it. Um, it, it degrades. It does. It. it we actively want it to degrade, we actively want to damage it. Because the net effect of that damage, supercompensation, um, for bone it means we get bigger bone mineral densities, for tendons we get better loading profiles, for muscles we get hypertrophy, nerves, you get better rate coding, better better coordination, blah 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 blah. You get stronger, you get better at the you get better at handling the stressors of your training. By training, that's the whole point of training is to provide stressors. But if you're constantly overloading, you're constantly providing providing acute overload, progressive acute overload, you're going to get tissue failure, you're going to get a chronic injury, chronic overload injury. So that can happen in a muscle belly, in a tear, it can happen in your pec could tear, you could, per, you could tear a bicep tendon acutely, potentially, but the most, most of the time, unless the, the force is huge, so unless you're in a combat sport or you're in like a collision sport like rugby, the chances of you getting an acute injury that's down to some freak accident is very small. So, for instance, if you're a strong man and you're doing stones, or if you're doing log and you fall backwards with a load, you're going to get an acute injury, and that's not down to overload. But if you're squatting and your tendons give way, it's not because it was a freak injury. It's, it's an overload injury. It's because you've been applying stress to the tendons. If it's a patella tendon, if it's a bicep tendon, whatever the tendon is, whatever the structure is, it's because you've been providing, you've been programming overload too much in your program. You're overloading way too much. You're not allowing time for regression. You're not allowing time for recovery. And that's where you're going to get tendon rupture. And then the back's no different. You're going to get slip disc. You might have a facet joint give way. Um, like th these are all signs. These are all acute incidences. But in weight training, 95 percent, 99 percent of the time, especially in powerlifting, weightlifting is different. It's ballistic. Strongman's different. You have weird implements going on weird planes. Powerlifting, it's almost a 100 percent down to, or 99.9 percent .9 down, 99 percent down to overuse, overload, not programming correctly, not deloading or not cyclically not, not loading cyclically loading intensely cyclically going up and down up and down loading volume cyclically going up and down up and down just following some like trying to add reps every session trying to add weight every session 
forever until you end up with an overuse injury and you get that back, you get sore back. So those are the two primary causes within powerlifting specifically, or within wind trading specifically, is a lack of attention to your technique, safe technique at that. And it is stronger than this, because it's kind of technique that we have a control spot. It is a stronger position. You will lift more weights and you will be able to lift more weights with those weights. So it's something, it's worth investing time in. And it might take two, three years to get it correct. It might take two, three grand to get the coaching that you require for you to be able to do it. But it's it's money well invested, it's time well invested because you'll lift more weight and you'll lift the safe. You'll get hurt less. Like from my own experience, um, I, I had a, a tendonopathy in my glute meat, overuse injury, from not cycling my training properly, which kept me out of squat training and lift training for six months. When I came back, I had a, I had a psychological issue with the weight, so that meant I could not move heavy. So I actually spent two years learning how to fucking move, with the net result, which is I've put on fuck knows like 200 kilos on in my total, and um, I am heavier. I'm, not that much heavier, but 10 kilos heavier. Most of it fat, so there's not like I'd put on a massive amount of muscle. Um, but I am heavier. But, you know, 200 kilos. My walks have climbed up by about 30 or 40 points. And I've been lifting a long ass time, so that's not, that's, that's an achievement. Um, you know, I'm able to squat two times a week. I'm able to deadlift two times a week. I put in large training volumes. I'll do working sets of deadlifts. Some, some of my weeks are 160 reps in two sessions. Like, I have no fucking way I could do that. Um, before I, I read, I dialed in my technique, I took the time to make my technique better. There's just no way. So, the net result of which is I can train more and I'm a better lifter, so it's worth the investment. So, I'll maybe do another video. So these are two primary causes. Um, I'll, I'll probably video an oil one tomorrow about how to, to, how to manage it acutely. But this is how to avoid back pain or lifting injury in general. Is one, sorry technique, and two, apply your program correctly. Well, I'll catch you for tomorrow's uh, strongest day. Hopefully the sound quality is not too shit in this video because it's taking fucking ages to record. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook, please give me a like. If you're watching this on YouTube, please give me a subscribe and a like. And if you have any questions you'd like to hear me answer, please jot them down below. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Mark, and I'll catch you tomorrow for your show today, 18. Thank you very much. Goodbye.